Hello, you guys. It's Kayla with the Celebration Company. We are going to make today just a cute little just fall decor piece. Um, using two dollar store items, we're going to kind of mash them together. So I've got from Dollar Tree one of these mason jars that says, this one says, oh my gourd, they've got several different ones that say different things. We're gonna use this one. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use, just one of the mason jars. And then this little guy here, Dollar Tree does have these, but they don't have this specific one. This one came from Dollar General for $2, so it's a little bit more, but it's a slightly just a little bit cuter than the ones at Dollar Tree. So we're gonna use this little pillow as well, or like, I'm not really sure what these are supposed to be. Maybe you hang them on a door, something like that. So we're gonna use both of these. So what we're gonna do to start is I'm gonna go ahead and just pull off this little jute bow that's on here. We are just gonna try to get rid of it. And I think it's glued on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it so I can just pull it off, okay? And don't worry if you kind of see how I just kind of pulled that a little bit. Don't worry about that because we are going to cover all of that completely. The next thing I'm going to do is attempt to take this little piece of metal off. Now, I still want it on there, but in order to put, we're going to be putting this on our mason jar. So, in order to do that, I think it's going to be a little bit easier if I take this off and then just put it back, okay? So, I'm just taking my... Um, paint scraper and just sticking it underneath and just kind of prying it off and it came off very easily. I'm just going to pull the paper off the back a bit um, and there's just like some hot glue and stuff. Just kind of pull it off and then we can just put it back on later. All right. So it's okay if there's still some things on there. You just don't want to see them. All right. So you can see on the back, there's still a few things on there. Looks nice and clean on the front. So we're just going to set that aside. And I'm just going to take my scraper and just kind of scrape off any pieces that are sticking up. Just to kind of give me a little bit more of a smooth surface. And then... The other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is this image that's on the front, it's sticking over on the edge just a little bit. It's not quite centered. I'm going to use my sandpaper and just go ahead and sand off that excess because that'll just make it a little bit harder to remove our fabric once we get our fabric on. Also, this is a little bit on the thick side. It's a little bit like cardboard. So I think it's just going to be easier to just go ahead and remove whatever excess there is and just get it nice and flush. And then I'm also just going to give it a quick sand on the top. I'm not super sure that that is necessary, but I'm going to do it anyways. What one thing it will do is remove all the glitter. So we're not fighting with the glitter. Okay. All right. So let me just clean up real quick. Okay, y'all. So, let's work on our pillow now. We are going to cut the top of this off, okay? So, I'm just going to go ahead and remove my jute hanger. Throw that out. And then, what I'm going to do is just try to stick my scissors in the threads and just kind of start pulling it apart. I want to keep as much of this together as I can. You can also use a thread puller for this. And so basically I just found a spot where I could just kind of stick my scissors in and then just start kind of pulling it apart. And 
And sometimes you may have to go back in and cut some more of the threads away. Towards the bottom where it's kind of double stitched, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get it separated. So I'm gonna grab, I do have a seam puller somewhere. Here's one. I'm gonna grab this and see if that will help. So this is a seam ripper. Like I said, you could, if you wanted to, just go ahead and cut it out, but I just wanna save as much of this fabric as I can because I'm just not really sure how much I'm gonna need. We about got it. All right, there we go. Save your batting. You can reuse that for something else. And if you want, you can save this back piece. It's a nice piece of white fabric. All righty. Here we go. So now we have, I'm just gonna pull our little threads out. We've got a nice little piece here that we can use. Okay. So just like this, it's embroidered. This pumpkin patch, that's embroidered on. So it's a really good quality. Um, so what we're gonna do now, this is going to go right onto our sign here. And what I want, what I think I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm trying to decide how this is going to be easiest. I think what I'm going to do is measure it. Um, so let me find my ruler. And measure. I'm going to measure from where the bottom of this little um, galvanized piece will be to the bottom of the jar. And it is five and three eighths. So now what I'm going to do is just take that five and three eighths measure and try to kind of just center it onto my um, piece here. And that's kind of showing me where I need to cut. So I'm using the plaid lines here to kind of help me see where to cut. Now the top, what I'm going to do with the top is I'm going to allow that extra space that way I can just cover it up with the top of the mason jar and we don't have to worry about, um, I don't have to worry about cutting it exactly to size. Okay, if that makes any sense. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just try to center the image. And I'm just gonna cut approximately the right size. I'm just using these um, lines on the plaid to kind of help me know where to cut. Okay, so here we go. So now we're just going to Mod Podge this on. I'm going to save those pieces. We might use those later. Um, I'm just going to grab my Mod Podge. I'm realizing in this video, for some reason, I keep doing this. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing that, but for some reason, I keep doing that. Um, all right, y'all. Let me find... Let me find a brush. Good grief, y'all. I... I swear, me and my brushes, it's, it's a hot mess up in here. 
Okay. I'm just going to go with the bigger one because that's what I got clean. Now, when you're doing fabric, remember, you do need just a little bit more fabric or a little bit more uh, Mod Podge than when you're doing paper, okay? You want it a little on the thicker side. But be sure to smooth it out really well. All righty. And now we're just gonna glue our piece down. And smooth it out real good. All right, there we go. So nice and smooth. So now we're just gonna take a sanding block and we are just gonna go at it. It's going to take a little bit of extra effort, okay? To, um, there, see, I did it again. I don't know, <laughs> to remove the excess, okay? So we are just going to just keep working at it. And there may be spots that we're gonna have to come back with the um, Mod Podge and like Mod Podge some more, but it should just start coming right off. You can see, see how that's just coming right off. And you guys also, you can paint the edge of your uh, jar, but since my truck, has some orange pumpkins in it. I thought it might be cute to just leave it orange. So I didn't worry about painting it, but you could totally do that depending on what your little pillow looks like and what you need for your jar. Oh, my nose, my nose is just running. I'm sorry. All right, so let's just keep going all the way around. And I just run it kind of up and down in an up and down motion. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper for this, but you could also use a sanding block. I just sometimes think the sandpaper does a little bit quicker of a job. So I like to use it. Now, if you've got a really good quality sanding block, then you probably won't have any issues. But mine is like Dollar Tree. Um, okay, so you can see how that's just starting to come up. We're just gonna keep on going. At the top it's not sticking really well I'm just gonna do a little little bit of hot glue there to hold that top in place just a smidgen all right and I'm just gonna get the last little bit of this and then we'll move on but seriously, this is going to be so easy, y'all. And it's just going to be, I think it's going to be really cute. Way cuter than it was to start. All right, here we go. All right, so there is the start of it. Next part is so simple. We're just going to take our little galvanized piece that was already on there. And um, we're just gonna put some hot glue on the top and we're just gonna glue this right back down. 
You could also use a little bit of E6000 if you want. But just line it up and just push it down. Okay, there it is. So um, all we need to do now is add a cute little bow. All right, so we're just going to make a, um, we are going to do a scrappy bow, a small scrappy bow. And I've got lots of fabrics here. I was kind of wanting to do some fabrics um, a, with my scrappy bow, in my scrappy bow. This right here is just some orange burlap um, from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start with a piece of it and I'm gonna cut it in half lengthwise. So I'm just taking one little piece here and I'm just gonna cut it this way. And that's gonna be our base. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take this fabric that came off of our, um, it's just leftovers. And I'm gonna see if I can tear it. And it tears, it doesn't tear real well. But I'm gonna use that in it as well. And then I've also got some of this orange gingham ribbon. I'm gonna use some of that. To bring in some of the red, I've got two red fabrics here. I've got this plaid, and then I've also got this polka dot. So I'm gonna use a little of both of those, and I'm just gonna cut and tear. Now, I did also set out some green because there are some green pumpkins in here, but I'm just a little bit worried it's going to look too Christmassy with the red that I've got going on. Um, we may give it a shot. I've also got some smaller, this is more like a gingham, but I think I'm going to use it as well, just a little bit of it. You can totally do ribbons for this. You could do just some raffia if you wanted, but I just thought I wanted to try just a fun scrappy bow with different ribbons going on and, and um, ribbons and fabrics. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of the green and just kind of see what it looks like in there. I can always pull it out. All right, so let's see. I've also got, I think I'm gonna add a little of this ribbon in here as well. Hopefully I don't have too much, we'll see. Shall see. Okay, so let's start putting this together. So we're just gonna make an X or a plus sign. Um, And then you just start layering on top. And I don't like to stack them up perfectly because I think that when you tie it, then it allows for you to be able to see more of your ribbons a little bit better if they're not stacked perfectly. All right. So 
once you get them all stacked up there, I'm going to take this ribbon here and use it to tie it. We're just going to see what this looks like. Like I said, I can always pull some out if we don't like the way that it looks. But you're just going to tie it in the back just really tight. It's really cute, but there's something about it I'm not liking. There's something I'm not liking about it. It's a really cute little bow. Super cute. It kind of looks like a hair bow to me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying it kind of looks like a hair bow. So let me show you what it looks like. Um, I feel like maybe it's just a little bit too colorful. So I'm going to pull the green out and see what difference that makes. See if it makes it any better. It's a little bit better. I think I'm also going to pull out the red and white plaid. I think that's better. So here's what it looks like now. I just pulled out the green and I pulled out the red and white plaid. And I think that looks, um, I think that looks cuter. Let me see here about taking a piece of ribbon across the bottom. I think it needs raffia, y'all. I think it needs some raffia. So let me just grab some raffia here. I'm just gonna bundle some up. To put in the middle of our bow. I'm just taking a bunch and just kind of bundling it up and then I'm going to tie it. Sort of fan it out a bit, cut off the excess. I'm going to hot glue that just right to the middle of my bow. looking better it's looking better it's looking cute so that's what it looks like with the raffia so now all I'm gonna do is just take some raffia and I think I'm gonna wrap it around let's see actually let's do it like this I'm gonna wrap it from the back and just tie it over here in the corner and that way we can just cover up that tie with the bow so I just took two pieces, two kind of thicker pieces. Just 
tying it up here, I'm just going to trim off the excess. And then I'm just going to take our little bow and glue it right onto that knot where we tied the raffia. And I think it is finished. I think it looks really cute. So super quick, super easy. Let me show you. How cute is that? Now tell me we did not elevate this. Um, we totally elevated it. It looks so much better and so much cuter. Um, just by doing those few little things. And like I said, we didn't even paint it. We did not even paint it. So you could paint it if you felt like you needed to, depending on what color your mason jar is, because they do have several different colors. But since mine was orange, I really liked it with the image. So that's what it looks like. I think it turned out really cute. So thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me for just a little while. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys very, very soon. See you later. Bye.